Kitco Mining special coverage of the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference is brought to you by First Mining Gold. Just like lithium, silver is poised for its own breakout due to energy transition. Audience favorite Chen Lin with Chen Picks is here. How are you doing, Chen? Great. How are you? Very well. Very well. Tell us about it. You wrote in a recent piece that uh, you compared uh, silver to uh, lithium and other critical metals. You were talking about how you're seeing lift with lithium uh, due to electric vehicle adoption. But you say that uh, silver is going to get its own lift. It's going to get its own similar lift and also due to energy transition. Right, exactly. So the technology always go like that. Once you reach your threshold, suddenly you have a blast. Yeah. Uh, in, my, in my talk just uh, a few hours ago, I, I saw that the, the, the electric vehicle went like this. It, it's not like this. It's like this yeah, in yeah. 10 years. And the same thing for solar panel. Unfortunately, for due to the labor cost regulation, red tape, United States and Canada is still not that cheap. I talk to people. But outside the U.S. and Canada, the solar is absolutely the cheapest way to produce energy already around the world. Well, explain why is uh, silver uh, so closely linked with solar panels? Right, because solar panel a uh, use uh, the because it's, they need all the wires there, and then they need the silver to do that. Uh, people are trying to say, oh, how about copper? Copper has a problem. Copper tend to rust. So solar panel can stand the heat and stand the wet, stand the, all these, and then if there's any rust, you see the uh, greenish co color, they will destroy the whole solar panel. So that's why they need the silver there to create the solar panel. Even in the past 10 years, there are technologies they use the silver to wrap the copper, copper inside, and silver outside to make the wire. Okay, so to reduce, there's effort to reduce silver component, but there's still, you can look at the chart, it's getting very, we are reaching a plateau, there's not much room to go down anymore. But there's a lot of room to going up, because the new technology in solar, solar panel, they use a lot more silver because they have multiple layers. Each layer you need a wire. So there's nothing you can do about that. There's just a lot more silver to will be in the solar future solar panels. There's no concern that there's going to be some metal or some type of process that's going to come apart and then they're going to substitute the silver out of uh, solar panels. There are technologies, okay, but the efficiency, uh, you sacrifice efficiency for that. Uh, for example, United States has a technology for cadmium tellurium. It's pioneered by First Solar. Okay, so right now it's about three, five percent of uh, solar panel. If you go to Department of Energy website, it's about 22 percent efficiency versus those uh, silver-based silicon is 26 percent. So then you need to think about, uh, okay, what to take or give, right? So what what would be uh, you want to pay up a little bit for the solar panel? So outside United States, they seem to all transition to that direction, except United States. Because United States want to protect our own solar panel industry. And then worse of that, there's a trade war between United States and China. China has happened to have the know-how, thanks to the state's support, that has the best uh, silver, so silver silicon-based technology. They, going, they just announced last week, so it's a breaking news. They're going to ban the export to the United States as a retaliation of United States uh, cranking down the semiconductor in China. Uh, what is the uh, growth looking for uh, for the solar panel injury? How important is this for energy transition? Yeah, so the growth is phenomenal. If yeah. you just go to the International Energy website, you can see last summer, they were predicting about 200 gigawatts, a little bit over 200 gigawatts this year. Yeah. By November, they say 250. There's a magazine came out this year, PV magazine, world famous authoritarian. They said this year will be at least 300. And I make a phone call to people, you know, for solar panel industry, they say at least 360. So you think about how much grows just in the past few months, and then let's convert that to silver, okay? Roughly speaking, not the, yeah. exactly. If one, for 100 gigawatts, you're talking about 70 million ounces of silver, roughly. So you think about they already increased from 200 to 360, that's a, more than 100 million ounces of silver demand increase just in the past few months. Where does silver come from? 
I think you might explain some of the investor presentations I've seen for uh, some silver juniors when they seem to be leading more with uh, talking about energy transition and solar panels as opposed to jewelry and uh, uh, protection that they had uh, a couple of years in the past. Uh, the thesis, so uh, regarding uh, using uh, silver for uh, solar panels, how do you play it? How do you how do you how do you, how do you play that, uh, Chen? Uh, what is uh, how do you get exposure to silver? Oh. That's a very good question. I mean, you can do that through buy silver, physical silver. Okay, I, I think eventually silver. If silver goes shortage, according to my friend Kreska, they have a very famous chart. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I invite to go to their website. The silver have a cup handle, multi-year, fifty-year cup handle. Will retest fifty. Once we go retest 50, we go through that. Silver will go to triple digit. I think that's the way we are heading to. Okay, and their silver, if you talk to my friend David Morgan, and silver is the worst performing commodity, the worst performing commodity, not you know, one of the, the worst commodities compared with all the other metals, including copper, aluminum, gold, even platinum, palladium. Silver, worst performing uh, commodity in the past 50 years. Why? Uh, my have a theory. Uh, silver is a byproduct of copper mine, gold mine, etc. So they overproduce. Okay, they just and then they sell. They produce it. They don't care. It's byproduct. They sell to the market. Overproduce. Depress silver price. My thesis is the reverse. Is going to be true because solar panel will suck up all the excess demand, all excess production, and more. Yeah. They will take a lot more, and then it, it's impossible for producers to respond for this surge in silver demand. And silver will hit a new high, and more people will treasure silver. Maybe in our lifetime, the central bank will buy in silver again. I want to step back a bit, uh, Chen. Uh, you follow not only the resource sector, but you also follow biotechnology, and you follow other sectors as well. Uh, you're an invest. You look at investment trends. Uh, where are we right now with uh, the resource sector? We just had that terrible start, or I should say that terrible end to 2022, where you had the tightening with the Fed, and then you're looking at all of the crumbling prices and difficult uh, financing arrangement. And then we're kind of off to the races right now in 2023. How does the resource sector look? Oh, it's a new beginning. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm so I'm glad you brought up the question. Uh, if you look at the, the chart, the TSX venture chart, right now we are at the bottom. It's about to turn up. If you look yeah, multi-year, yeah. we look at decades chart, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm happy to provide you the chart. Um, so, so this is about to turn. And then if you look at the New York Stock Exchange venture, the data from Bloomberg, yeah. the side, the money on the sideline is highest in the decade too. It's very similar right now, the money on the sideline, very similar to 20, 20, uh, 2029, very similar to 2020, uh, 20, no, 2009 and 2020. Those are bear market, bottom bear. So the massive money on the sideline, and then resource money just start, resource just start turn. Massive buying of gold from central bank, massive demand of silver from the solar panel. So we just need a little bit of the money on the sideline to move to gold and silver sector, and we'll have a blast out here. How's China looking? I mean, that is a vitally important uh, market for the metals. Uh, on the upside, we've had uh, the opening uh, with uh, getting past COVID. On the downside, they've had a rickety uh, real estate uh, sector. Uh, also as well, too, I mean, opening with COVID also still a little uncertain what the future is there. Why well, China goes through COVID the reopen. Last time I checked, it's ninety percent reopen. So almost like before, the traffic, more traffic, the uh, railroad traffic is very close to the peak. So people getting the life is getting back to normal, and then there is a stimulus coming. But the problem is the real estate is hopeless. Okay, there the bubble already pop. I just don't see there any way to reinflate the real, real estate bubble, I don't think the government want to do that, okay? So they may want to do some, a uh, little bit like low-income housing in United States, but more to the Singapore model. So government sponsor uh, medium affordable housing for the people, you know, for, for new graduates who couldn't afford those expensive apartments. They may want to do that, but this is limited. Mostly it's a new energy transition. The solar and wind is one of the key areas China wants to do. And then China is after Ukraine, 
uh, China is very, put it this way, very scared, put it this way, all right? Because if there are any conflict with the United States, the Persian Gulf will be cut off. China will be cut off from the oil and natural gas supply. They can only work with Russia from import from Russia. Otherwise, it will be cut off. So China wants their own energy security. One of the area will be solar. Because in the, in the West, in Tibet, in Xinjiang area, the wide open space, uh, desert, they just need to, uh, you know, put a solar panel there and then put a high power transmission line to the east. And then their energy storage, or so on and so forth. So, the, so, so that seems to be the area for the stimulus. And it's very positive for solar industry. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about uh, China trends with China. We talked about uh, what's happening with solar. Is there any larger trends or is there any larger ideas or is there any other investment theses that you're looking at right now? Yeah, one area I talk a little bit uh, here, but in more in, uh, in other presentation mm -hmm. is uh, the trade war between United States and China. I see a potential, a new critical metal coming out and nobody else know how to spell it. It's called Talarian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need some lessons. <laughs> yeah. So, because first solar is to use 50% yeah. worldwide production mm -hmm. um, of Telari. Mm -hmm. So, and then if we go down that path, we'll take more than 100% worldwide production. So, at one point, very likely this year, United States government will start to sponsor Telari money, mm -hmm. and that will be on CNBC. But you and your audience will be the first to know. Well, explain to why is tellurium important and what is it used for and why is a trade war matter for the metal? Tellurium is a very rare metal. You know, worldwide yeah. production annually is a few hundred kilo. Yeah. It's as rare as platinum. Mm -hmm. But it's used a key ingredient called the cadmium tellurium solar panel by First Solar, which is the largest solar panel producer in the United States. They use that. We talk about that a little bit, that, that technology. They don't use Chinese silicon and silver technology. It's the, the gap is getting wider, uh, so United States want to protect domestic industry. China don't want to export yeah, the technology, yeah. so want to ban the technology. So it will be the two uh, two different world. We'll continue to grow on two different world, and the growth of domestic solar panel will will take more than 100 tellurium production very soon. Could be this year. Chen, how do people follow you? Go to ChenPix.com. Chen, always a pleasure. Thank you, Michael. Pleasure. My name is Michael McRae with Kitco Mining here at the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference. Kitco Mining, special coverage of the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference, is brought to you by First Mining Gold. <laughs>